What's going on guys, ARM Case here and in today's video I'm going to show you the exact guide how to start using DaVinci Resolve for beginners. We're going to start from very simple thing all the way to delivery. So after this video, you're going to be able to start working in DaVinci Resolve without any problem. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is basically to learn how to load video in your DaVinci Resolve. And it's actually very simple. In order to do that, go to the media page and on the left hand side you have basically all your drives. In order to add extra location, click on DaVinci Resolve Preferences. And in the media storage, you can add location for where your media is stored. So this is very simple. Once you add new location, it's going to ask you to restart your program. And basically, once you restart it, the new location is going to be over here on the left hand side. Now, let's add media in our program. So let's click on the work drive where I have file already for you. And basically, we can locate the file and drag it down. Once you drag it down, basically this file becomes for your master and you can start editing. However, here's a quick trick. If you have a file, let's say, that have many cutscenes, here's a very important thing for you guys to learn. If you right click on a video and if you choose scene cut detection, it's basically going to cut scenes automatically for you. That way you don't have to manually cut it. Let's say somebody sent it to you and you need to manually cut it. You don't have to do that because DaVinci Resolve knows and can do that for you. So once it's cut and this is just basics again, there's more video on my channel precisely about this particular technique. So check it out. This is just a general guideline. So you click add cuts to media pool. Okay. And you can close the window basically and here's your video have a bunch of cuts right over here. So this is how you add media in the Venture Resolve. It's very simple and very straightforward. Now let's talk about editing. In the edit panel, we have right now all our clips selected. So let me deselect them really quick. So basically this is all our clips. We can create bins and basically place our clips inside the bins. Very simple. If we can hold shift and basically select all of them, we can just drop it and let's rename it with a right click and call it something like commercial. Okay. So that helps you to organize things a little bit better. Now, basically, Here's all our clips, our entire project. Let's create a new timeline. It's very simple. Go to the file, new timeline, and basically here it goes. You can rename the timeline however you like, or you can leave it basically empty. It's all up to you. Now, here's a very simple trick. If you're going to have check mark, leave it empty. Basically, when you're going to create timeline, you're not going to have any clips in there. However, if you're going to uncheck this and click create, all your clips from the bin automatically going to be placed in order basically over here in the timeline, which is very important and actually very helpful as well. So here we have it. This is our basic timeline we can edit and editing in DaVinci Resolve is extremely simple. All you need to know is just a couple tools. So first thing you need to know, let me zoom in with a plus and minus. Basically we're zooming in into our editing. All you have to do is basically to learn how to use the razor tool or in DaVinci Resolve it's called blade tool. Basically whatever section you want to cut, just click on it with the blade tool and it's going to cut it. So one more time, just like that. And basically we're making selection. Now with an arrow, you can select any of those pieces basically and either to delete them or there's another thing you can do. If you click delete, it's basically going to remove that click and move entire timeline on that place. However, if you just want to delete clip without moving your entire timeline, backspace going to delete that clip for you and nothing going to move. So that is very simple. So depending what you're editing, there's a different techniques for that. Okay. So 
another thing very important uh snapping tool snapping tool is a great thing when you edit basically snapping tool helps your clips to basically snap closer to each other and it makes process a little bit easier if you're going to turn off snapping tool you can see that nothing happens and basically you need to manually adjust that now so once we turn on snapping tool again we can see that this thing automatically snaps in place and basically if we zoom in even more we don't have any kind of gaps so there's very simple very straightforward process and basically that's going to help you to start uh, editing and basically working right away now on the right hand side over here we have a few things one of them called mixer basically mixer is just a basic audio indicator showing you over here I don't have any audio but it's basically showing you the audio signal just like in any audio program now also you have inspector which is this little uh, menu that you can do a few simple things for example if you're going to select this clip right over here you can change opacity very simple you can zoom in zoom out okay and in order to reset that click this little twisted arrow and basically you can change position let me skip that change position and basically perform very basic simple things like that so that's very straightforward okay so let's go to the color panel now in the color panel we have very first thing we need to do is to allow scopes to be visible so click on and basically you're gonna see let me move it over here you're gonna see the scopes showing on your computer so by default you're gonna have two scopes or one and they're gonna look exactly like this however if you want to have full control of what you do highly recommend using four scopes and basically you can drag them on the second monitor right over here and basically start using them now over here you have what's called node it's also called node tree and basically you can create a new node if you right click add node and you can create serial parallel layer again if you want to learn more about that in details check out my other videos i explain everything in more depth about those kind of things so let's say we want to add serial node basically it's like a tree stacking different uh, corrections you make on top of each other so let's say i want to add a little bit saturation just like this and a little bit contrast and basically we can see that this is the node that everything all our adjustments being affected to now if you don't want to see that node you can either delete it or if you push shortcut Control d you can temporarily block it from being visible so let's go to a little details in the camera raw if you're working with the raw footage you're going to have all those components visible to you that way you can change it since this is not a raw clip they all grayed out and i cannot access them second color chart for now ignore that you probably never going to use it i rarely even use in my professional work so this is pretty much pointless for you now color wheel we have log and we have primary wheels for the beginner i really highly recommend start using primary wheels instead of the log again if you want to learn more about those things check out my other videos i explain everything in high details what are they for so basically you have lift gamma gain basically shadow midtones highlights and offset is just like a general offset for your entire picture okay and over here at the bottom we have basically luma value which is brightness value for each of those adjustments so for midtones for highlights and for the shadows so this is very simple and over here we have contrast pivot saturation hue we can change hue and make him look like hulk and default value is zero actually no default value is 50 there we go and we have luma mix so next one we basically have rgb mixer again for the beginners you're probably never going to use this until you learn what are they for so ignore that and finally if you're using a studio version of davinci resolve you're going to have noise reduction over here so all you have to know as of right now when you're learning the program that temporal noise reduction is the most effective in this program and basically 
if you want to achieve certain results, do something like three, better, and leave it at medium. And basically, if your footage is very grainy, let me zoom in. This is actually very clean footage. We cleaned it before delivery. Okay, and once you start increasing it, you can see basically everything becomes a little bit blurry. Therefore, it's fighting the grain. So the color panel is relatively very simple. Next one. Right over here, we have curves, we have regular custom curves, or you can individually adjust every channel. If by any means you need to reset any of that, just click this little arrow again and things are going to be reset for you. Okay, and this little chain right here, basically gang them together, so all of them being adjusted simultaneously. Okay, now you have hue versus hue. This is how you change color from one to another basically if you're gonna click on the green and start moving it around let me see let me zoom in so you guys can see we can see how we're changing one value to another one so that's hue versus hue then you have hue versus saturation that basically reducing saturation of a given color Again, like that, let's expand it. Basically, the more expanded they are, the more fatter, the softer the selection is. And we can see how that's affecting the selection. Next one, hue versus luma. So this one <clears throat> basically is brightness of the hue. So once we go down, okay, just like this, we can play around with basically brightness of the color. Okay, reset that. And next one we have qualifier. Basically, you can select a given color more specifically. For example, again, if we want to select his bandana, okay, and click right over here, we can see everything becomes grayed out, and only thing we see is his bandana. Now, this one right here is a highlight mode. It basically only shows you whatever you have selected. If we're going to exit that mode, we can see that only his handkerchief is actually being selected. Okay, so again, with the hue, we can change value. There's a lot of different ways how we can basically proceed and achieve certain things. Okay, so let me add saturation again and contrast, kind of get it in a basic state. So next one, we have masks, very simple. Basically have different shape masks. Okay, and basically when you add mask, all your adjustment happens within the mask inside. So, for example, if we're going to turn everything kind of, let's say, yellow, all our adjustments happen within the mask. Now, if we want, want to track this mask to his face, all we have to do, go to the track menu right over here. Okay, place it on the talent face or whatever you try to track and click forward right over here i highly recommend start tracking from the middle of the clip not from the beginning or an end that way you get more accurate track so we can see now this mask's basically sticking to him okay so let's reset that let's reset our mask okay and let me delete that color selection all right so that's that next one basically blur very simple you can make it sharper if you're going down or you can if you go up make it more blurry okay that's that and then we have the key panel which again is more advanced again watch my other videos to learn how key works and over here we have sizing again you can move it within certain areas over here let's reset that and basically, this is the whole essential of DaVinci Resolve. Once you learn how to use all those tools, you're going to easily be able to edit and color grade and do whatever you want within the program. So let's talk about delivery. I'm not going to be talking about Fusion and the Fairlight. They're extremely complex and probably will require years of learning and experience before you guys can start doing visual effects. For example, that's what the Fusion is for. And Fairlight is basically the audio editing uh, program within DaVinci Resolve, which is very advanced. So let's talk about delivery. Delivery is very simple. All you have to know is your file name. Let's say 
video, the location, you click browse and you select your location. If you click single clip, basically it's going to render entire timeline. If you go into clip individual clips, it's going to render each clip individually separately, which is great if you try to create proxies and things like that. Next thing is your codec H.264 if you want to deliver or if you work in an intermediate, probably you want to choose something like DNX HD or HR. Uh, very important. Let's say you rendering the entire project and you have select. Oh, let's keep it at H.264. Now you can choose actually NVIDIA if you have NVIDIA graphic card, which helps you to render everything much faster than you would with a processor. Also, very important, a lot of people that make that mistake when they go to the advanced settings and over here you have data levels, auto, video, full and retain sub black. Basically, my advice to you, never change any of that. Just leave it at auto. Don't mess with them. That way, when you render out from the ventures off, your footage going to look exactly like within the program. Because if you're st going to start messing with them, you're not going to get the same video from the program, what you've been doing. So basically, this is a very basic concept of DaVinci Resolve. It's very straightforward. It's actually not as intimidating as it looks. And hopefully you learn something a little bit. And again, if you want to look in depth for more things you can do, watch my other tutorials basically, and they're going to help you to achieve and basically start working in this program. So thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the following videos. Take care.